Hello, forever friends and family. Welcome to webinar. And the title of this webinar is very long. How to build your network marketing nutrition business fast. The author of this book he is, there are two authors, Big Altam Schreiter, MLM legend, and his son, Keith Schreiter. Guys, I must tell you that I start to read this book and I got super excited just super excited so welcome to webinar today is july 7th my name is alex tunitsky and i'm organizer of this i am the organizer right zoya the organizer of this webinar and let's start to read isaac please go ahead good evening everybody preface do we sell health and wellness nutrition products if we market products to improve health, this book will be treasure trove of ideas on how to get our prospects to become customers or distributors. Not every idea here will be the perfect idea for the perfect situation, but all it takes is one good idea to change our business and our income forever. With forever living products. Okay. <laughs> In this book, we will cover great things to say and do for our products and for our opportunities. Remember, it is the quality rather than the quantity of ideas that we learn that makes the difference. And we have to put them into action. Health products are preventive and difficult to market to new prospects. Why? because they may not see or feel an immediate difference. There is an old saying, selling prevention is difficult. Selling a cure is easy. Prospects will eagerly take action for a cure. Here is an example. We get a notice from our dentist that our annual checkup is approaching. We don't feel motivated. But then we get a toothache. We take instant action and call for an appointment. In most countries, health products are classified as prevention. Pharmaceuticals drugs are classified as cures. But don't worry, we can learn great things to say and do to market our health products. That is why having the right words makes a difference. Please note, many states, countries, and health agencies have varying laws. And of course, our co companies have a variety of guidelines also, because what we can and cannot say changes frequently. Check the current rules for health claims and advice with your company. But all the examples in this book will help us create better words that get results. Our words can help more people take advantage of what we offer. Let's get started right away with some great things to say and do. Decisions. We are in a decision-making business. Our company provides the products that the website, the lawyers, the customer service department, and will ever sh even ship directly to our customers. In fact, our company can do everything except get prospects to make yes decisions, to become customers, or to join as a distributor. And that is why our company needs us. The company does almost everything. All we have to do is get yes decisions from our prospects. Wow, that is a great deal for us. Why? Because our job is easy. Once we learn how, to pros how, how prospects make decisions, we can build a huge business in record time. Getting new customers, easy. Getting new, get, getting new team members, no problem. So the obvious question is, how do prospects make decisions? Well, the answer might surprise you. So let's get down to business. This is not how people make decisions. They wait for the universe to give them a sign. They listen to the little whisper in their heads. 10,000 reasons for, for and 9,000 reasons against. 
they sit through an hour long presentation, watch videos and look at PowerPoint slides, listen to testimonials. And at the end of the presentation, they carefully weigh the pros and cons and then make a logical decision based upon the facts. Well, this might be what others have taught us, but the reality is much different. If we knew exactly how humans made up their mind, how much would that be worth to you, to us? Millions. And that is why we should continue reading. Here is the short story. The science of decision-making is an enormous subject. We won't, go there, we, won't, we won't go there in this book. All we need to learn are four simple steps to get our prospects to make a yes decision. So we have a successful network marketing health products business. Step number one, build rapport. If our prospects don't trust us or like us, then nothing we can present will make much difference. Thankfully, we only have to spend a few seconds on this step to get the trust and belief we need. Step number two, icebreaker. Now that our prospects will listen to us, we can introduce our business into a social conversation. Many times our prospects will make their final yes decision here based on how we describe our business. Our prospects might think, yeah, that sounds good. I want that. Step number three, closing. After we give our prospects a brief hint about our business, in our icebreaker, they will have some pre-existing programs in their minds. They could have a program that means they want to live longer. They could have a program that they deserve to earn more money. For these prospects, a yes decision is instant. And for others, we can prompt them to make a yes or no decision with just a phrase or two. The above three steps might take 15 seconds. Relax. It is hard to believe now, but we will see how it works in this book. Step number four. If the answer to step number three is yes, then and only then will we give a presentation. And that is it. Our presentation could take a little as 15 seconds or as long as our prospects wants. In this book, we will cover many mini presentations that only take a few sentences. Now, back to the short story. We will learn these four little steps and we will get yes decisions. So get ready for more customers and team members. But first, we need to find people to talk to. Who can I talk to first? Before we can follow the four conver conversation steps, we first need someone to talk. So how do we get an appointment to talk to others? Let's take a look at the three types of prospects. First, our relatives and close friends. There is an old saying, dogs know who to bite. The people who know us best will be able to tell when we're trying to sell them something. They sense this, this I'm sorry, they sense desperation and an agenda. If they are going to sense our agenda, what should our agenda be? To try to help them. Before we talk to our clo close relatives and friends, let's think about our agenda. What is an agenda? It is our thoughts and intentions for the expected outcome. Prospects notice our tone of voice, our microfacial expressions, and our body language. Whatever our chosen agenda, it will, sh it will shine through. Our agenda will have more impact than the actual words we say. Before we say our first words, let's establish our agenda in our minds. We should think, I want to help them. I will offer an option. They can decide if this option works for them or not. And what will this option be? Maybe we will often, maybe we will offer them 
an opportunity to have a second income in their lives or build a better immune system or to take care of their bodies so they live longer. But remember, we are offering an option. That means no convincing and no high pressure sales techniques. Think of it like picking a restaurant to go to. We can suggest a restaurant to our close relatives and friends, but it is okay if they choose not to go there. Our prospects appreciate extra options in their lives. Who wouldn't? We could say, this is one more option for your life. You can take advantage of this option now, later, or never, but you will always have this extra option. This means no rejection and no pressure. We give our prospects an option, done. Our, our relatives and close friends know us well. They will instantly detect our intention. What to say to relatives and close friends? We have a rapport and trust with these people. They have, they have experience with us. However, we will feel guilty if they think we're just trying to make money off them. Having options as our agenda will help us avoid that. Still, we might feel hesitant to approach everyone that we know. And some people are intimidating. We have no idea how to approach them without rejection. To solve this, we will use the comfortable, uncomfortable formula. This allows us to tell them we have an opportunity, but gives them an escape so they don't feel trapped. Here it is in action. Mary, I'm perfectly comfortable with your decision to look at my business or not, but I was uncomfortable not asking if you wanted to look and having, your, and having you think that I didn't care. How does Mary feel when she hears this invitation to learn about our business? If she has an interest, she feels honored that we want to talk to her right away. If she doesn't have an interest, we told her that it is okay if she doesn't want to look at our business. She doesn't feel bad. We didn't jeopardize our relationship, so we don't feel guilty. And with this formula, we can approach everyone. Isaac, Let's... hold on for a second. Excuse me, please. Would you please read this section again slowly? Mary, I am perfectly comfortable with you. This, 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 I'm sorry. Mary, I am perfectly comfortable with your decision to look at my business or not. But I was uncomfortable not asking if you wanted to look and having you think that I didn't care. I'm asking everybody, do you think it's a priceless or not? Absolutely. Couple of lines, and I put my comments here when I read it first time. What should we do with these sentences? Any idea from anybody? Anybody? What we should, should we, we should use them. We should every, use them, but how time. to use them? Learn so by I, heart. Say it again loud. To learn them by heart. By heart. Very simple. Learn them by heart. And when we say like that to anybody, they will see that we don't have an agenda to sign them up. I did it on purpose. I said it, sign up. You never heard from me. I use the word sponsor from big, uh, not from, from, um, boy. What his name, my God. Everybody knows, I will remember later. Sponsor people, when you sponsor people, they feel better. When you sign them up, they must work for you. But when you sponsor people, you work for, them, them, for, for themselves for a long, long time because you will be a coach, you will be a trainer, you will be a teacher. 10 lesson on an Epskin. Who is the author? Lesson on the napkins. Anybody remember? It just ended up on the tip of my tongue and I also forgot. <laughs> Ten, don't fail. Don't, don't fail. fail. Ten lesson 
on the napkins that he said when you sponsor people and majority people in multi-level marketing sign them up recruit people from many professional we don't recruit people we sponsor people how can we make money with our prospect if we help them to make money we will make money if we will not allow not allow we could not be able to help them to make money we will not uh, we will not make any money with them so it's a very simple sentence mary i am perfectly comfortable with you with your decision to look at my business or not but i was uncomfortable not asking if you wanted to look and having you think that i did not care that's a different story right Isaac, yeah. please go ahead. Let's do another example. David, I'm listening to an online business presentation tonight. This is a business that you can do too. I'm comfortable if you want to join me tonight or not, no problem. I don't even know what you have scheduled, but I just felt uncomfortable not letting you know about this business. Isaac, hold on for a second again. With this sentence, is it easy to invite somebody to join our webinar like today? For yep. somebody, it will be like amazing. We don't sell anything on the webinar. We just exchange opinion. We read the book. We teach people. We learn on our own. Correct? And with this sentence, it will be much easier to invite anybody. But I just felt uncomfortable not letting you know about this business. That's it. Please go ahead, Isaac. How does David feel? Good. He has options. We don't judge him or our friends based on which option they he takes. Another example? Hi, Laura. I got, I got tired of working two jobs for, for extra money. So I started a part-time business out of my home. I thought it might be interesting for you also. I'm comfortable if you want to take a look at it or not. I just felt uncomfortable not letting you know about it. With this comfortable, uncomfortable technique, we only take the volunteers. The volunteers are ready for action. If we press for an up, up appointment, what does that signal? Either our prospects are skeptical of our approach or it is not the right time for them. Both situations will waste everyone's time and make everyone feel bad. But if we use this technique to get to the point quickly, we can sort out who is interested and who's not still maintaining our friendships. We can do the same kind of invitation for customers. Here is a quick example. Hey, Peter, we're both getting older and don't have the energy we had at 16 years old. So I'm drinking a special breakfast drink to help me feel younger so I can keep up with my teenagers. I'm okay if you want to try this breakfast drink or not, but I at least wanted to let you know what I'm doing. I didn't want you to feel like I wouldn't think of you right away. As we can see, if we don't like, if we don't like using comfortable, uncomfortable, we could adjust. In this case, we use the word okay instead, but we get the general idea. Second group, people we know who are not relatives or close friends. We may not have rapport with these people. So we will have to do a bit more work to connect with them. These people will want a good reason to meet with us. And this means they will want to protect themselves from salespeople and time-consuming presentations. We have two ways to get them interested, interested in meeting with us. First way, we can tell them we have wonderful benefits. Let's list a few of these benefits now. Feel younger, live longer, help their children's immune system, fewer doctor appointments, a second income to pay their bills, 
a chance to work from home instead of going to work. We could simply ask them if one of these benefits interests them. For example, would you like to have energy all afternoon instead of doing all that yawning? It won't take long for them to say, sure, let's talk. Or they could also say, no, thanks. I feel better when I suffer and struggle all afternoon. Please don't help me. <laughs> it's funny. Isaac, thank you very much for your reading. Take a break, please. And I would like to ask friend and partner from Brooklyn, Zoe Sergey, please continue. And I just would like to let know everybody that our one of our readers, my friend and our friend and partner, Helen Nosipov, she has a technical challenges with your equipment today, pretty much similar to mine, had a uh, headset. So she will be, she's with us, but she will go in mute mode. Zoe, please go ahead. Good evening. Hello to everyone. Thank you for reading. Um, so why would they want to suffer and avoid a solution from us? We don't know. But here are a few reasons they wouldn't want to continue this conversation. They had a bad experience with a pushy salesman last week. We look like the ex-girl or ex-boyfriend. Nothing we can do about that. We said the wrong words. They believe health comes from a diet soda. Their minds are on something else right now. We have bad breath. So don't worry, this is life. Some want to improve their lives, some don't. The good news is this choice is over in seconds. And because we gave them a choice, no one is offended. Second way, we can let them know we might have a solution to their problems. This is even more powerful. We worry about our problems all the time. Here, here are a few problems they might have. Low energy, challenged immune system, their kids don't like healthy food, growing old, meager retirement savings, a time-consuming commute to work, a terrible boss or soul-sucking career. In this case, our conversation would look like this. us. Do you have this problem? Would it be okay if we would fix it? Here are a few examples. Us. Do you hate working here at the shopping mall on Saturdays? Prospect, of course. That was easy. Here is the second example. Us. Would it be okay if there was another option? Prospect, sure. When can we talk? That was easy. Here is a third example. As, do you find growing old really hurts? Prospect, yes. Every little task is harder too. As, would it be okay if we tried some natural ways to slow down the aging process? Prospect, sure. Uh, when can we talk? Third group. People we don't know at all. Now conversations get harder with this group. When they first come into contact with us, they will be thinking, who is this person? What does this per person want? Can I trust this person? Should I set up my salesman defenders, uh, defenses? Is it time to be skeptical? Should I hide my wallet? Try to avoid a time-wasting sales pitch. These thoughts mean we don't have rapport with this stranger. We will spend some attempting, attempting to get trust and rapport. Once we accomplish this, then we can move on 
to getting an appointment. Yes, it might take two or more engage, uh, engagements with a stranger to create rapport first. Some people are natural trust builders. They can achieve rapport in seconds. Other people, we have to work harder to connect with strangers. A few words to disable strangers' fear. Here is a quick example of how easy it can be to help strangers relax and feel more comfortable. If our stranger puts up a wallet of defenses, a wall of defenses and mistrust, we can immediately say, relax, we don't have to do anything and things will remain the same. But if you want a way to work out of your home instead of commuting to work, I can let you know about one option now. That sounds pretty non-threatening. Next, let's learn a few ways to soothe our own anxiety about talking to prospects. How to fix feeling nervous when talking to prospects? It isn't our presentation that makes us nervous. It's our intention. Is our intention to sign them up or get them to buy our products? Well, that will show in everything we say and do. Prospects can smell aggressive sales people a mile away. But what if we only intend to offer them an option? We don't care if they take an option or not. We only care that they know they have the option. Then we neutralize our personal feelings and accept whatever decision our prospects make. We want what is best for them. And then what happens? Our prospects will pick up on our new intention and relax. Now our conversations become stress-free. Maybe we could start by saying, would you like to hear an option? And if they say yes, then our conversation will be easy and enjoyable. An option means it is okay if you take advantage of this or not. No one is going to pressure you either way. This feels very safe for prospects. They relax and they have no reason to reject us. To avoid feeling nervous, simply remember the word option. But it gets better. Here is the best news of all. Most people are pre-sold on what we have to offer. That means we don't have to sell, no selling. If our prospects already want what we have, all we have to do is avoid talking them out of it. If this seems hard to believe, let's take a survey. We will go out and ask 50 people. Do you want to live longer or die quickly? Almost everyone wants to live longer. They might smile at this statement, but they definitely want to live longer and are pre-sold. Next, we will ask 50 people, do you want more money in your life or less money? Most people want extra money. They want to hear more from us. Wow. So here is our new approach. Number one, prospects want what we have to offer. Number two, don't be a pushy salesman and try to convince them. Instead, number three, instead, Give them our option, give them the option of our products and opportunity. 
Number four, let them choose if now is a good time for them to say yes. That wasn't so hard, was it? No more fear of talking to prospects. All we do is give them with one more option in their lives. Gifting is fun. Now let's move on to the four steps on conversation we will use when we talk to our prospects. Remember them? Step number one, rapport. Step number two, icebreaker. Um, step number three, closing. Step number four, presentation. Step number one, build a rapport first. Rapport means that our prospects trust us and believe us. If they don't, they won't buy or join. Rapport is different from relationships. We can create trust and belief in a few seconds. Relationships, well, those take a lot longer. We don't have to worry about deep relationship building now. All we have to do is to create enough trust and belief to deliver our message. This decision to trust and believe only takes seconds. Prospects prejudge us harshly in the first few seconds. Humans make quick decisions. Why? Thousands of years ago, a caveman would meet a stranger. He had to make a quick decision. Will this stranger be helpful? Or will this stranger be dangerous? If the caveman spent too much time thinking it over, it could have proved fatal. What about today? When a stranger walks through the door, we instantly prejudge the stranger. Will it be okay if the stranger sits next to me? Should I guard my wallet or purse? Why is this stranger wearing a mask and carrying an ax? Yes, we still make snap decisions based upon a few seconds worth of information. Our first challenge in networking marketing is to build good rapport with our prospects. But first, some good news. We already have rapport with most of the people we know, unless we stole their car or got them fired, most people will trust and believe what we say. But we don't have rapport with strangers. We will have to be conscious in our efforts to build rapport with them, but it will only take a few seconds. The first few seconds we invest in building rapport are the most important part of our conversation. We have to have rapport before we deliver our message. What happens if we don't build rapport? Our prospects will think, what's the catch? I don't know you. You sound like a salesman. I need to be careful. What do you want from me? It's too good to be true. When our prospects have these thoughts, they protect themselves by creating objections to keep us away. What do these objections sound like? I need to talk to my spouse about it. I'm too busy. I need to think it over. It is not for me. I'm happy with my current situation. No new ideas, please. Gloria, thank Ready? you. Take a break, please. Thank you for your reading. And I would like to ask to continue. Friend and partner, the most reliable manager from New Jersey, Iris Cristobal. Iris, please go ahead. 
Thank you, Alex. Um, thank you, readers. Ready, set, go. How do we build rapport in few first few seconds? By letting people know that we think the same way they do. Prospects are more comfortable with people who are more like, like them than people who are different from them. How do we emphasize our similarities? By telling our prospects that the fact that they believe and we believe. Starting with one little fact that we have in common helps create belief and trust. We want a library of facts to choose from so we are ready for any situation with any prospect. Here are some good opening lines and facts that we can use for our health products. Things are so stressful nowadays. Mornings are difficult. We all want to live longer. It would be nice to have an energy of a 16 year old. I would, it would feel great to fall asleep within seven minutes of our heads touching the pillow. We have to keep our immune system healthy. Our children are exposed to so many germs as soon as they go to school. Dying early is inconvenient. Okay, a little dark humor. One of the first symptoms of heart disease is death. Okay, maybe taking the humor too far. These facts are safe. They also introduce our business into social conversation. This is a great way to be both in agreement with our prospects and to move our conversation forward. Some facts about our business opportunity. Commuting to work gets harder and harder. We would love to spend more time with our family. It would be great to pay for the holidays with cash instead of credit cards. Two paychecks are better than one. It is difficult to get a pay raise now. We wish weekends were longer. We dream about firing the boss. A good way of looking at this is that starting with agreement is good manners. People like people who think they do. Make it better. How? Two facts are better than one. When we tell our brain, our prospects, two facts in a row, their brain says, I can trust you. Now that we have our prospects trust, it will be easier to talk about our business. Here are some examples of putting two facts together. Things are expensive now. We all need more money. Of course, we need good nutrition, but most healthy drinks taste like grass. Of course, we should take vitamins, but we always wonder, are they working? Jobs interfere with our week. It would be nice to have a three-day weekends forever. It's hard to get a race now, but prices keeps going up and up. Having our own business sounds great. However, we have to be careful not to take too much risk. All we are doing is assuring our prospects that we see the world the same way they do. This makes them feel more comfortable in dealing with us. What happens when we start with disagreement? Iris, hold on for a second, please. I believe that we should have a chance right here to edit. Jobs interfere with our week. It would be nice to have three day weekends forever with forever living products. Yep. How about this mm -hmm. idea? I think forever with forever living products. True. Please, please, please go ahead. Our prospects be the wall that shuts out our message. No matter how good our message or offering is, our prospects won't hear it. We want our prospects in an open, positive state of mind. Then we can deliver our message. Once our message is inside their heads, they can decide if our message will, be, will serve them or not. That means we don't have to use any high pressure closing techniques. All we have to do is deliver our message without a blot of baggage or prejudice. 
the decision is to trust us or not happens quickly. We have to be fast. Those first few seconds make the difference. So what can we do to increase our chances of rapport? Using certain magic words and phrases helps our prospects agree with us. Let's start with the most people. Here is what happens when we say most people. Our prospects think, am I part of the most people or am I part of the less people? Well, most people are part of most people. So I must be in that group. Plus, I enjoy being part of the most people. It feels safe. That is why I choose a crowded restaurant instead of empty restaurant. That's why I want to walk through a dark alley late at night with a group of people instead of alone. Notice how this feels when we say, most people hate getting sick. Most people want to give their children the best nutrition before going to school. Most people want more money. Most people would rather work from their homes. Most people want to make their lives better. By using most people, our faces make it easier for prospects to trust and believe us. But this isn't the only magic phrase we could use. Let's look at the phrase, everybody knows. Some examples, everybody knows how health, knows health is more important than money. Everybody knows it would be hard to get pay raises this year. Everybody knows home businesses get great tax deductions. Everybody knows our bodies are made of, off of what we eat. Everybody knows that if we work hard, our boss gets a big house when he retires. Everybody knows we don't get paid enough. Everybody knows that nutrition is a secret to good health. Everybody knows that if we don't do something different now, then tomorrow will be a repeat of today. Or we could use the phrase, everybody says. These words have the same effect as everybody knows. Our prospect will want to agree with what we say. It is easier to take a path of least resistance. A word about smiling. Smiling works. Our natural tendency is to trust people who smile and to distrust people who don't smile. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what we should, be, what we should smile when we meet new prospects. Babies react to smiles before they can talk. If we smile as we walk down the street, many people will smile back. If we think being extremely serious works, we won't have any many, many prospects buying or joining. Remember, our prospects make their initial decision to trust and believe us within a few seconds. A smile on our faces helps them feel more comfortable with us. We want to do everything possible to keep our prospects' mind open so that they hear our good message. If we're not in the habit of smiling, now is the time to practice. Do compliments work? Direct compliments sometimes feel insincere. We make our prospects uncomfortable. Sample, some examples of direct compl compliments. Hi. What a beautiful home. You seem like a smart consumer. You are looking sharp today. Compliments like this appear too obvious and seem shallow. What is a better way to give a compliment? Focus on something a bit less obvious, then add a question. When we add a question at the end of our compliment, our prospects don't have to acknowledge it and thank us. Instead, they focus on answering our question. This is more comfortable for everyone. For example, I like your car. How do you go about choosing that model? I see you like eating healthy. What motivates you to eat healthy when everyone seems to be eating so much junk? Your children are polite. How did you get them to be that way? So yes, compliments do work. 
but adding a question at the end makes everyone feel better about them. Let's move on to introducing our business into the conversation. Iris, thank you very much. Take a break. I believe that's it for today. It's enough. I prepare some short but powerful video for everybody to watch it. And in the meantime, if anybody has a comments, questions, or whatever you would like to say, please unmute your microphone and go ahead. Any volunteers so far? Yes, Alex. Um, I think um, these short phrases, you always, um, the, the author always have, comes up with like, how come I did not even think of saying that? It seems mm. so simple. It makes you think, yeah, right. Even my my even my own defenses are, are are down you know it seems like a nice just conversation but we don't really use it that way thank you no thank you as zoya mentioned before we just have to memorize this conversation not conversation these sentences would it be okay if it's very popular in our group of people if we use it when i approach stranger i would ask would it be okay if we have a short conversation now? In the most in the most cases, people responded yes. Of course, I'm not approached stranger who is walking very fast ahead of me, but depends on the situation. When you ask a question like that, would it be okay if we talk for a short period of time, a short time for two minutes? Majority of people responded yes. Anybody else? And nutrition, when title of the book, let's see, go to cover. Nutrition, I, I have a tricky question for everybody. What do you think? How many nutritious, nutrition products in Forever Living? Anybody knows number? Any volunteers just to shoot the number? I believe I'm on a mute mode. It's hard to count because there's so many of them. No, don't count. Give me the number. Just guess. How many? Anybody? Nina, go ahead. Uh, something a little bit more than 200. No, no. Nutrition, nutrition, not products. Not all the products, just nutrition. Uh, I don't understand the question. Okay, skincare, it's not a nutrition, right? No. Ah, Ab okay. Absorbency, it's a nutrition. Uh, I think about 20, 25. <laughs> You're almost 100% correct. 26, I asked my wife to count it today before we start prepare for webinar, she counted 26 nutrition products. Let me show you something. Uh, How many? Aloe vera too? No, no, it's a drink. It's nutrition, but it's a drink. Uh -huh, okay. Let me show you something. Hold on, please. What do you see on the screen? Anybody could help me out? Cover. What? Book cover of the book. Okay, good. All right, thanks. Let me show you something. I prepared it for some reason, it's gone. It's coming up.
I, I failed to share with you. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. File got so big file. To make a long story short, if you go to catalog nutrition, there are a group of products, right? Alla drinks, not Alla drinks, be high products, be high products. It's also nutrition products, correct? Mm -hmm. And just nutrition like absorbent C. Whatever calcium, it's nutrition product. All of these products are nutrition in the section nutrition. That's what I mean. So if we use these products, if we use this example, I mean, from the books, uh, from Big Al book, we will build our business much more efficient and more simpler and easy way. That's my point. Now I want to share something with you. What do you see on the screen now? Woman in glasses. Okay, perfect. Let me enlarge the screen. I want everybody to watch this video. There are texts in Russian language. We will translate Iris for you later on. Is that powerful? It's yes, unbelievable. Alec. No translation needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, huh? It's just unbelievable. I installed this video on my YouTube channel and on the way I post it on Facebook too. So we have no reason to complain. What a journey for this lady, huh? Okay, time is up. And Zoe, go ahead. You want to say something? No, I just wanted to finish. We have no complaints to, what did they say? To our destiny or whatever, to our life. 
because we are creators. No, she proves by her life, with her, her life, that we are creators of the destiny of our life. Absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. This lady, amazing. Thank you, Zoya. Thank you, readers. Thank you, Isaac, Zoya, Iris, Helen. Please fix your technical challenges next time. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me, tomorrow at 11 a.m., Ukraine will run a webinar with none other than Diamond Manager Jane Leach, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I make a posting on the Facebook on New York. You could have a link. Probably it will be in English, but they will translate it to Ukrainian, I think, but I'm not sure. I don't know, but we should join. Again, thank you, everybody. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.